Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Forgotten Coast Fishing. Here we have the beginning of the day over here and the end of the day over here. It's going to be a great day. Had a little bit of time getting out of the canal there. We're at low tide. And so with that full moon, we're going to have a real strong tide today going from extreme low to pretty high. So it should be some good fishing today. So we're going to get out probably to about the 120, 150 foot mark and see what we can pull up today. All right, he kind of doesn't feel like a red snapper. If you've been watching my videos recently, you know, I've just kind of been only catching red snapper, even though I've been trying to catch all kind of other things, but this, this might not be a red snapper. He's not pulling quite as hard. Let's see what we get here. A little, oh, it's a vermilion. All right, this is a little vermilion snapper, also called a beeliner. And we can keep these. These only have to be 10 inches. And we can put 10 in the box. Oh, here we go again. Oh, man. Yeah, this one's got a little bit more weight to them than that first vermilion. Hopefully, it's just a bigger vermilion. Still doesn't feel like a red snapper. So that's good. But it could be a trigger fish. Could be a red snapper. Who knows? Let's get him up and see. All right, nice vermilion. Let's get him in the box for vermilion number two. Now these guys like red snapper and lane snapper are total length. So if you pinch the tail, get it to the end, the furthest point of the tail. And then to the mouth, he's about 14 and a half. All right, what I'm using to catch these vermilion this is just your standard double drop rig. At the bottom, if it's got a six ounce sinker, and this is made up with 30 pound mono, and these are three ounce circle hooks. And this is my Pin Battle 5000, and this is a Talus PX medium heavy rod. But I like to use the lightest weight that I can, especially when I'm fishing for these vermilion because their mouths are a little tender and they're easy to tear. And I feel like if you have the lighter type weight on here, you're less likely to be as forceful, you know, working these fish up and less likely to tear their mouth and lose them. But you do need one to kind of get you to the bottom without it drifting too far away. So you just kind of have to experiment with your weights at different depths, at different currents when you're out, just to kind of find that right weight that gets you to the bottom, but yet it's not so heavy that it feels sort of cumbersome. And I just want to show you these squid. I picked these up at Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe, Florida. These are California squid. But what I like about them is you see how white they are. They don't seem to have as much ink as some of the other squid. And they really, you know, don't stain your boat as much. All right. All right. Oh, man. All right. We've got something decent here. Hopefully he's that nice vermilion like we got just a second ago. Man, I'd love to get my limit of those in the box. Vermilion snapper are tasty, tasty fish. Easy to clean. You can keep 10 of them. They're not out of season ever. All right, it's what we got. Yep, another nice vermilion. Check them out. I don't think he's quite as big as that last one we got, but that's a nice vermilion. All right, I'm going to put some gloves on. I have noticed with these vermilion and red snapper too, but they'll really stick you a lot. And for some reason, those vermilion sticks, they just kind of hang around for a, a several days, kind of sting a little bit. I don't know if there's something different about them than the red snapper, but I'm, since I'm kind of getting into vermilions, I'm going to put these on, try to maybe save my hands a little bit. All right, here we go. Man, I think I have found the vermilion hole down here, everybody. It is a drop and catch, drop and catch. 
This could be our fourth vermilion here. Oh man, did we get a lane snapper? All right. Now this is a lane snapper. He may be a little on the small side. He has to be 10 inches as well, but we would be able to keep this guy too. And this is like a vermilion. They don't get that big, but there is some decent meat for their size and tasty meat at that. Let's see what he measures. Oh yeah, so he's 11. Not the biggest one out there, but we'll go ahead and get him in the box. I love these lane snapper. They are some of the most beautiful fish to me. Let's get them in the sun. Those nice yellow lines, those kind of orangish fins, yellow fins on top. Man. Well, let's get this guy in the box. Okay, here we go. Oh man. All right, be careful. This does feel like a vermilion. And if it is, I want to be a little easy so I don't tear their mouth because this is a little bit bigger one. And so he's putting a little bit more force on that hook and on his mouth. So if I can take it easy and counteract that, I might be able to get him up. Oh man! Look at this lane snapper, everybody. You saw that other one that I had in the box. Compared to this one, that other one's a minnow. Man, this could eat that other lane snapper. Look at this guy. Man, that is a nice lane snapper, everybody. All right, well, he measured close to 16 inches. And that is a very, very nice lane snapper. Well, let's get him in the box with this other one. Look at the difference. Here's the first one I caught compared to the one we just got. Man, can fit inside of him. Oh, here he is. Man, he just kind of, kind of snuck up on me. It was just kind of a tap and a tap, and I thought maybe it was just a tom tape, but then just something just grabbed it. Man, I'm so lucky we don't have the dolphins showing up. Sometimes, here we go, nice vermilion. Sometimes those dolphins show up and it gets hard to get these guys in. But that's another nice vermilion out here. Definitely a nice vermilion. He's close to 16. But let's get him in the box. Man, just beautiful fish. Oh, here he goes. All right. Oh, we got him. Oh, man. He's got some weight to him. Definitely. Man, I changed rods and setups too. This is my medium rod. And this is just a 4000 Shimano reel, a symmetry. It's an old reel. Nothing special. But if you're catching all these vermilions and lane snappers, you know, you don't need anything that big. And I wanted to go to a little bit lighter rod just in case I was tearing some of those vermilions mouth with that heavy type rod. But this is doing its little shake, trying to get down to the bottom. Let's see if it's a red snapper. A good bit heavier on this lighter setup. What have we got here? It's kind of looking like a big trigger fish. And check out his blue fins here in the sun. And look at that, how beautiful those are. All right, well, let's get him in. We need to let him go. He's just another trigger fish that's out of season, but a nice one. Oh, here we go. All right. All right, this may be our vermilion. I'm showing some good looking marks on the bottom all of a sudden. What do we have here? Man, a lot further down than I thought. Here we come. Oh, it is. Oh, it's another lane snapper. Man, today is the lane snapper day for sure. There's no season on them, but you don't catch them every day. But man, I think this, this is number three for me for the day. Man, and I love these fish. Man, check them out in the sun. Look at that. Man, just again, all those lines on them. Just a beautiful looking fish. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go down on my weight. Like I was saying earlier, I like to get a weight that just gets me to the bottom but it's not too heavy 
you can see it's calmed down a lot. The current has, has also kind of slowed down. So I don't need this six ounce weight anymore, especially with this medium rod. It's just putting too much pressure on it that I don't need. So I'm gonna take this one off. And with this double drop rig, the easiest way to do that is just back up this loop that you've tied on the bottom. That just is gonna slip that weight out. And then you can just get this one other this one on just by feeding it through the eye and looping around the bottom. And there you go, you've already changed your weight. This is probably gonna be a little bit nicer and feel a little bit better on this lighter setup. Yep, it made a difference. All right. So I know my head camera just went off. So hopefully you can see this from the boat mounted camera. But here again, it's kind of that same size fish we kind of just been getting. Oh, he's got that that jerk. Maybe it is a red snapper. Maybe it's a big lane. Let's see what we get. Oh man. Oh, check it out. What do we get here? Is this a porgy? Let me check them out. Yeah, man. Haven't gotten these in a long time. A little porgy. All right, well, these are good to eat, too. Check them out. Nice little porgy. Now, I'm anxious to clean this one and kind of show you because they have a nice white meat that you wouldn't expect from something like this. Well, let's get him in the box. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh yeah, man, something a little bit bigger. Just a little bit more fun, actually, pulling these guys up on this lighter rig. You know, like I said, you don't need anything super big. I mean, we could probably use a medium heavy inshore rod and a little 4,000 or 2,500 reel even to pull these guys up. Now, if you got something bigger, that's gonna be tougher. Oh, a vermilion again. All right. I wished it and it came true. Vermilion. All right. All right, got him. Yeah, so this was a big delay in getting this fish. We're kind of starting to drift around a good bit. I think the wind is finally starting to change. It's actually died down. Man, look at the difference of the seas. Just gentle rollers right now as opposed to those huge swells we had earlier. So we're a good bit ways off the reef. Oh good, oh man. Wow. Man, sitting here telling you we're not gonna get something good. And man, look at this vermilion. This may be the biggest vermilion of the day. Wow. Oh, and he got off. Good job, Vermilion. Check him out. Man, that's a nice Vermilion right there. Look at him. Man, and those green stripes on him. Can you see it in the sun? Look at that. All right, let's get a measurement. All right, so the tip of that tail. So he's about 16 and a half. That's a good Vermilion. Oh, here he goes. Yep. All right. So, you know, I'm kind of starting to wonder if I'm too far from the reef because I'm just waiting and waiting, just sitting here with no action. And then all of a sudden something comes up. So, you know, as you know, I don't have a trolling motor on this boat, so I have to do everything by anchor. And I've gotten pretty good at it, I think. But, you know, there are times like this when the wind changes or something like that. And, you know, it's just kind of a lot of effort. I do have a windlass which you know makes it a lot easier but it's getting a little bit later in the day and since i'm catching fish still i think i'll just kind of stay the same all right because i'm getting vermilion and who knows maybe being further off from the reef is getting me these vermilions yeah this is a quite old reel for me this is a shimano symmetry 4000 and it's not one of the higher ends by any means in fact, I think I got this probably 15, 20 years ago, maybe. But man, still going strong. Oh, all right, here he is. All right, now is this gonna, whoa, man. Jeez, this guy doesn't wanna get caught. Man, 
he's if it's a vermilion he's going to be on the bigger side but hopefully it is this will be number eight but what we want is a really nice vermilion what have we got down here is this a trigger fish oh man we got two fish whatever it is oh we got a porgy again all right hey man that's cool red snapper and a porgy man i guess i shouldn't complain about being too far off from the reef because we're getting some nice fish all right get this little red snapper back man check out this porgy he's got teeth in him let's see if we can open his mouth he's not gonna let me but he's got teeth in there kind of like sheep's head you know kind of like little two rows of them kind of for crunching things but let's go ahead and get him the box i'm excited to get him cleaned up and kind of show you that meat some nice white meat yep that didn't take long all right all right so is this going to be our vermilion i don't know we'll see he's not got that big of a pull to him and it's a vermilion all right all right so this makes number eight we've got two more to get our limit kind of set a time limit for heading on back at two and it's 145 so we got 15 minutes to maybe try to get our two more vermilion all right here he is all right so yeah i just kind of dropped it back down and hoping i still had some squid on there obviously i did because i've got them again all right is this number nine vermilion is it number nine what do we have coming up here no nope, red snapper red snapper you're getting in the way you're getting in the way time check 10 minutes left come on see if we can get two fish in 10 minutes two vermilion in 10 minutes all right all right here we go this is gonna be a vermilion no question no question this is a vermilion got a couple more minutes if this is we probably only have one or two more drops in us before two o'clock hits oh come on it's got to be a vermilion it's just got to be man yes all right man i was right about something right about something all right let's get you off oh man two minutes two minutes this is probably our last drop so is it like basketball like if you get the shot off before the clock hits zero if in fishing if you get it out there start dropping it before time goes out does it count i think so okay all right oh man oh no this is a snapper oh gosh let's see if we can get this up and get out one more time oh man unless i've got two and one of them's a vermilion but this has got a lot of fight to it oh man snapper man you're getting in the way to get this guy off get this out before the time runs out unless of course it's got a vermilion on the end of it oh it's a porgy oh man a nice porgy Jeez. all right well i'm not going to complain if i don't get my 10th vermilion because i've got some nice porgies and a real nice one this time look at this green on them and the sun at the top there got a little rainbow color in them all right man look at this box in here and i'm going to be fishing with my one of my hands tied behind my back because that porgy just broke or something broke my hook off i don't want to take the time to re-rig so we're going with one hook all right this is going to be our last drop let's see if we can do it 
with one hook. So nothing on that last drop. Something was kind of nibbling at it. I think probably a tom tape and it got my squid. So let's go ahead and head on in. Unfortunately, we didn't get the 10th vermilion, but that's okay. We caught a lot of vermilion. We got some nice lane and those porgies I'm really excited about. So we'll see you at the cleaning table and we're gonna clean those porgies up. it back in gonna go ahead and get my rods washed down get the engines flushed out and clean those fish but um, I did a fish count once I got here and actually I did have that tenth per million so good thing I didn't get that last one on that last drop but let's go ahead and get these fish clean all right we're gonna go ahead and clean this porgy so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna kind of feel for where this gill plate point is and it kind of goes about right there so I know I'm gonna do my cut about like this. But one way to get through this skin, instead of just kind of sawing at it like that, which you could certainly do, it's almost kind of easier just to go ahead and make yourself a kind of a puncture and then just kind of come down to the belly like that. And then you can follow along to the head like that. Then go ahead and start where this tail meets the body, make you a little puncture, and then just cut a slit just through the skin all the way up to this cut that you made earlier. And then once you have that, you're just gonna follow your knife on top of these bones, just removing that fillet from the bones till you get to the backbone. And there you can see the backbone right there. So what I do next, I take my knife, run it over top of the backbone and go all the way through the fish. And then just having my knife hover along the backbone, I'm gonna go all the way out to the end of the fish, just like that. Now that you have this fillet removed a little bit, you can start to just remove this fillet from these rib bones. Just kind of letting your knife kind of follow on top of these bones. And once you get to the back of the skin like this, you can take your knife and just run it over top of the bones right here all the way to the belly and there you go and really no missed meat at all so the next thing we're going to go ahead is get this fillet off the skin and so just start at the tail kind of get a little bit of a hold of it and then what i like to do is get this fillet close to the edge of the board and i just follow along with my left hand just behind the knife so I can hold the fillet down as well as kind of feel if I'm leaving too much flesh on the skin. All right, then I'm gonna just kind of trim out some of this belly. Now I've noticed that these porgies have bones that extend further down the body more than like a red snapper. So just kind of feel to where they stop and they go to about right here. So what I like to do is just make kind of a shallow V where those bones end and go all the way up. So you're just gonna kind of cut just that sliver out. And then just kind of feel to see if you left any. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So there you go, some nice porgy fillets. Now we'll see you in the kitchen and we're gonna cook these up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cook up these porgies, but before we do, I just kinda of wanted to show you how nice and white fillets these are from these porgies. So they're gonna be great in a recipe. So what we're gonna make is we're gonna make sort of an Italian dish, and it's really a two-step process. First off, we're just gonna cook these fish in this cast iron pan, sort of with olive oil and butter, just sort of in the standard way. Then we're gonna set those aside, and then we're gonna use these ingredients over here to make a cream sauce. And then we're gonna put the fish back in here to heat it up, and then serve this over this angel hair pasta that I've already prepared. So I've gone ahead and I diced up two Roma tomatoes as well as one red bell pepper. And I'm gonna go ahead and salt and pepper these fillets and then get them in this cast iron pan with a little olive oil and butter set on a medium heat. All right, so I've got this heated up. This was about two or three tablespoons of olive oil and equal parts butter. 
So I've salt and peppered these, and what I like to do when I put my fish in is I put the serving side down because I'm only going to flip it once, and that way if you start with the serving side down when you flip it, you'll have the side that you want to present on the top. All right, so I just pulled this fish off. It, it went for about three or four minutes on each side. And I'm just gonna set this to the side, cover it with some tin foil, and then I'm gonna use the same pan to create this sauce. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, this is about three quarters um, cup of this um, diced bell pepper. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get that in there, cook this for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put our garlic in. All right, so now that I've got that going, I'm gonna go ahead and put some garlic in. This is this kind of pre-minced garlic in a jar. It's really nice. You could obviously use um, fresh garlic, but it calls for two to three cloves of garlic. And so that's probably good right there. Now this is just gonna cook just for a couple minutes, just to kind of get these bell peppers softened a little bit. But since I've put this garlic in there, you have to be careful. You don't wanna cook it too long and burn the garlic. So I cooked that bell pepper for about two minutes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put our spinach in. This is 10 ounces. I think I may need to add a little more. This looks like a lot, but if you've ever cooked with spinach like this before, it's gonna wilt down tremendously and you know lose a lot of its volume. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put smaller amounts in at a time, let that wilt, and then I can start to add more. I will go ahead and add a little salt and pepper at this point. All right, so as you can see, that first batch has wilted down quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of this. Now this was a 10 ounce container. So we'll see if we need to add any more. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it at this point, um, just to see what the volume you know, looks like once we get it wilted down. We want you know, the, the ingredient proportions to be correct. So we don't want too much spinach you know, and not enough bell pepper and that kind of thing. All right, so I even added some more spinach. So this was ended up being probably about 12 ounces of spinach and you can see how that reduced down quite nicely. All right, so our next step is we're gonna go ahead and get the cream part of this sauce. Now this is a half of a block of one of these cream cheese, so four ounces. We're gonna eyeball it. If we need to add some more, we certainly can. And this is a half a cup of half and half. So we're just gonna kinda let all this cream cheese get melted, get this half and half warmed up, kinda see what our sauce is looking like. And then we'll add our Parmesan cheese and our tomatoes as our last ingredient. All right, so look at this. I wanna show you before I add the other ingredients, look how thick this has gotten. So that's exactly what you want. So I think we got our ingredients um, nailed down exactly right. So I'm gonna turn this down to a low because I don't want this to start to burn now. So our last two ingredients is I'm gonna put, this calls for six tablespoons, but you see I'm just kind of shaking it on, kind of making it look nice. And just kind of give a good coating on the top. And then for our final ingredient, I'm gonna put these two Roma tomatoes and we'll see end up how much we put on here, but something like that. So that probably was almost all two of them. So what we're gonna do last is we're gonna go ahead and put our fish back on here. They actually feel still kind of warm, but I'm just gonna put them on top here just to sort of reheat just a little bit and also maybe absorb some of this sauce as well. Look at that everybody, that is looking exceptional. All right, so our last thing I think I'll do, grab this lid. This is actually not the lid that goes with this, but look, it fits perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat off now that I've got this lid on here. I don't want that cream and that cheese um, to burn on this bottom of this cast iron. So I'm gonna put this lid on. We'll let, maybe let this sit for about a minute or two, and then we'll serve it over this angel hair pasta. All right, so I think we let this go for about three minutes, but what I was looking for is, as you can see, now all that cheese has melted. Some of that oil has risen to the top. Man, this is looking fabulous. So what I think I'm gonna do to serve it, I went ahead and put some of our angel, pasta, angel hair pasta on our plate here. I think I'm just gonna kind of scoop up a lot of this goodness underneath the fish, get some of that on there with it, and then, 
maybe kind of grab some more and top it like this. Wow, look at this everybody, this looks fabulous. So I'm excited to try this. I'm excited to try this recipe. This is actually a new recipe. I got this from my sister. She does tours where she takes people over to Italy. And uh, I asked her, I said, do you know of any kind of good fish Italian recipes? And this is what she sent me. So also I'm excited to try this porgy because as I was saying, that's such nice white filet. This is excellent everybody. I'm gonna have some more, but I'm gonna leave this down in the description. So you can make this for yourself. We're always looking for different kind of fish recipes and this one just fits the bill extraordinarily. You can go to a restaurant and you're not going to find anything this good. So please check this recipe out in the description. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you won't miss my future videos. So until next time, hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. Mm -hmm.